Okay, keep it short. <laughs> oh, my. So, yesterday, it was Super Tuesday, Super Fraud Day, the day of fraud, the day of voter fraud, the day of flipping votes, the day of making sure that Ron Paul was, you know, the supporters, are you discouraged now? Or are you going to redouble your efforts? Um... <laughs> Because <laughs> I see so many people, oh, he's got to run third party. No, he's got to run in the Republican Party until the very, very last. And then if it comes down to it, maybe, uh, you know, it's a third party thing going on there. But uh, not before that. And certainly you don't quit. See, what they're hoping is that a lot of you guys will just, you know, get discouraged and quit showing up. <laughs> and then... Even more, their story can be told that oh look, Ron Paul doesn't have the support. No, you got to show up ten times more. You gotta bring a friend next time Ron Paul speaks in your community. Right, pack your car, uh, offer to pick people up and go down there. Um, and if you get turned away, don't be discouraged because that's actually a good thing, right? Because that actually makes the you know makes the headlines where you know hundreds were turned away because Ron Paul is filling rooms. This thing isn't over. This thing is so not even close to over. This thing is just growing out of... The more they try to stomp it, the more they try to stamp it down, the more people are showing up. Um, so if he does run for third party, think about this. He gets, say, 25%. It's looking like at least 25% of Democrats who are just sick to death of Obama. Uh, a large number of Republicans, I would say in excess of uh, 25%, of the uh, Republican Party, who just, I mean, the, the numbers for Romney and Santorum are manufactured, and there's no freaking way if either one of those guys get in as the Republican candidate, which looks like one of them is, that they could anywhere, they, there's no Democrats and Independents voting for those guys. There's no, there's no sane people voting for those guys, right? People who can read, you know, people who have read like one book in their life are not going to vote for those guys. It's as simple as that. So, uh, I mean, come on, Santorum. I mean, just, just you don't even have to quote him out of context. Just quote him. Give him full quotes, and he will scare the holy bejesus out of anybody who can, like, you know, read or, you know, is female or, you know. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, and then Romney is, you know, the robber baron extraordinaire. And he, there are many Mormons who just will not see past him, just like there are many Democrats who can't get past uh, Obama or, you know, can't get past, you know, black folk who can't get past Obama, um, no matter what. Okay, we well, expect that. That's, that's human nature. Um, but the majority of the people aren't Mormon. The majority of the people aren't black. The majority of the people aren't Jewish. The majority of the people in this country, like it or not, are middle-class white folk. And many of them, you know, most of them have some education and enough education to see that, you know, these two jokers and the front, and the front runners in the Republican Party are, you know, not going to be good for the country, <laughs> to put it mildly. So, the point being, 25% of the uh, Obama supporters, in excess of 25% of Republicans, and 60% of the independents and libertarians and other socialists and other crazy people that are, you know, in the center. Um, not that socialists are in the center, but, you know, the, the centerists are, are 60% for Ron Paul. So with that, you know, a vote for Ron Paul is a vote for Ron Paul. None of this BS about a vote for Ron Paul is a vote for Obama or a vote for Romney because there are too many blue Republicans and there are too many, right? <laughs> Wait a minute, blue Democrats? What are they called? Red Republicans? I don't remember. It's all confusing to me when they start trying to mix these labels up. Uh, red Democrats, that's it. The red Democrat, uh, or the blue Republican, or the whatever it is, right? Um, <laughs> doesn't matter. You get the idea. Is Ron Paul pulls from both parties. Ron Paul crosses, right? Liberty is popular. Freedom is popular. Constitution is popular. Getting rid of the TSA is popular. Uh, NDAA, for those that know about it, this is an abomination. <laughs> I can't help it. Anyway, <laughs> but the idea is the people in this country are, are fed up and the revolution continues. The revolution is not over with this election, by the way. No matter what happens in this election, whether he runs third party or he somehow pulls out the Republican nomination or whatever happens... I think enough people are waking up to the fact that, uh, yeah, we kind of let the republic go a little bit there, and now we have idiots in control. 
So you can use the term evil idiots. I think they're just greedy, greedy, greedy idiots who don't, <laughs> who don't understand that, you know, they're destroying themselves along with the rest of us. Um, it's just, it's painful what's going on. And people have woken up to the fact that, hey, wait a minute, we, wait, hold the phone, the NDAA, what, we can't, pro what, they're trying to pass codify laws and the, you know, the Patriot Act, for that. HR 347, uh, you guys need to take a strong look at that, you cannot protest at the Republican convention, because there's Secret Service agents there, and if there are Secret Service agents there, it's a felony, um, the campaign stops, nope, no protest in there, okay, and is Obama going to sign that thing? Of course he is. Right? Okay, so, guys, you need to get out there. Oh, here's a little piece of news. Uh, Virginia, basically, well, they didn't really nullify it because all they said was that, you know, any uh, of their officials, any, any people that work in Virginia, any of the uh, public officials or law enforcement or so forth, uh, are not going to aid. But they didn't say that, you know, federal officials, they stopped short of saying that the federal government could operate inside their, you know, state and carry out these ridiculous and blatantly unconstitutional laws, um, or portions of the law. And that whole thing, as, as several of you pointed out, my bad, you are correct, they did not uh, uh, nullify or ink out the uh, por portions about, um, and I got a link to it down there, uh, of the NDAA where it comes to, you know, indefinite detention and so forth. Basically, it was a signing statement. So, um... If it's just a signing statement, the signing statement can just as easily be changed or crossed out later. Again, at least I try to make that point clear, is that it, any changes that are made that easily can be changed back just as easily. But yeah, the provision of uh, indefinite detention and, you know, the most egregious portions are basically still in effect. And I, 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 I try to point out that, you know, that law needs to go along with H.R. 47, 347, and... Oh, my goodness, all the different things that are going on. I enjoy, there was one great video, I linked it down there. For people that are just not clever, that can't understand, right, because I got into a little, I got into a little tiff with uh, some friends of friends, or actually family of friends, um, over the war, in, you know, because they're like, oh, look at that, that, that uh, speech by the Prime Minister of Israel. Who gives a fly, what that guy... You know what? It's he's the prime minister of Israel. He wants his little children to go off and fight and die in a war with Persia. That's fine, but it doesn't mean that you know he has any say about sending our guys, about sending our troops, about sending your children, your parents, your friends and family to go die in some silly war. And see, there's no surgical strikes. They're not going to do a surgical strike. And if they did do a surgical strike on these uh, nuclear reactors, that is insanity in and of itself because all of the radiation that they'll release if they, you know, with bombs into the atmosphere, like they, they don't care about that. But I mean, that is, should not even be considered as an option just because of that. But there's no such thing as a surgical strike. Who are you guys fooling? The military's going in. If they go in, they're going to go into the ground. They're going to make just as big a mess as they did in Afghanistan and Iraq. That's our modus operandi. We just go in there and fuck things up. Right. <laughs> Here's your freedom. We're gonna bomb the freedom out of you. We're gonna bomb you right into freedom. Here you go. Don't don't mind all the dead babies and all the women that are laying around bleeding or anything. Okay, so we have enough people in the United States that realize this is a bad idea. And uh, actually, some generals actually took out a full page ad. We'll put that link down there. Uh, and these are guys that you know they have stars on their collars, not in their eyes. They understand what it's what the, you know the price of war. And that a war of choice, that, that even the very term, a war of choice, that's a war of aggression. That means we start a war, right? I don't know, the country I grew up in, we didn't start wars. We may have been forced or tricked into responding to other people that were, uh, you know, causing violence and, you know, aggression, like the Nazis or the Germans, right? Paint that picture. Or, uh, you know, oh, in Vietnam, the communists were going to, the domino effect and the whole, well, Vietnam's still, Vietnam's still communist and we trade with them. We, and uh, anyway, and I, and I have uh, personal, you know, problems with that whole thing because members of my family uh, left their blood there and left their bodies and got their names on the wall. Um, not direct family, like, you know, brothers and sisters or moms and dad, but I mean, I have cousins and second cousins because on the mainland I have large family, <laughs> large family. Um, and some of them went there and fought and died. For what? Okay, and then you're going to try and do it again in Iraq. Well, got away with that. And then that worked so well, let's do it again in, in Iran. 
But again, all of those issues, all of this stuff, the only guy talking about the Federal Reserve, which is the main issue. Why is gas going up in price, right? And like I said, I got, I got sidetracked. I can't say anything. Uh, what, oh, uh, if, you, if you vote for Ron Paul, the price of gas goes down. <laughs> How's that, right? Let's just keep it simple. Right? Never mind the war and the economy and the Federal Reserve. Just vote for Ron Paul if you don't want your gas to be $10 a gallon. Simple. He said 7 This guy in the link said 7 No, nah, it'll be 10 They want 10 They've been trying to get 5 and after 5 comes 10 Um... And just like all these other European countries, they're paying 10 bucks a gallon. Why shouldn't the United States pay 10 bucks a gallon? Oh, we're special. Uh, no, we're not. And they're going to try and get 10. So if you don't want $10 a gallon gas, right, so you can drive to your abortion and pay too much for your abortion because <laughs> then vote for Ron Paul. If you, if you don't want to pay ridiculous sums for, you know, just regular goods and services from doctors and lawyers and whoever it is, uh, vote for Ron Paul because the reason why things cost so much and why your money's no good and why you you know even if you do have a job you can't make ends meet is because of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve. Do you get it? It's the Federal Reserve. It's about the Federal Reserve. The reason why we can prosecute a drug war is because of the Federal Reserve. The reason why we can prosecute these foreign wars and pay our troops is because of the Federal Reserve. The reason why we can you know everything it boils down to the Federal Reserve. The reason why we can build all these prisons and the government has unlimited funds to harass the citizenry is because of the Federal Reserve. Um, and every time, they're, now we're at the point where we're borrowing money to pay the interest. <laughs> so now the Ponzi scheme begins to accelerate. And next year, the 100-year charter on the Federal Reserve comes up for renewal. Um, you might become aware of that fact. It was a 100-year charter, and if they renew that... Um, things are not going to get any better. It's the economy, people. It's all about the economy. Um, anyway, okay, I said I'd keep it short. So the bottom line is, look, you need to go out and work ten times harder. Um, a Zen exercise, bring your damn cameras, get out there and do stuff. Everybody that can do anything, write a blog post, make a video, uh, bring a v camera and document the fraud, prosecute the fraud if, that you know about, uh, file the complaints, make sure that it doesn't go unpunished, and look forward to the new, uh, you know, uh, elections that are coming up, or the new primaries and, and caucuses that are coming up with fervor. Maybe you need to go in there stealthily. Like I said, don't wear your Ron Paul t-shirt and don't, right? Because so, see, and that's the thing. And, and don't get confused. When I say the voting is in secret, that means the vote is in secret. That doesn't mean counting the votes is a secret. That doesn't mean they get to count the votes in private where, you know, that should be 100% in public. The tally should be in public um, and 100% public knowledge. No secret counting. The, the two parts of your right to vote are the part where you get to vote, uh, whether you have a Ron Paul shirt on or not, but anyway, where you get to vote and where, and where you know your vote was counted. That seems to be the part where people are missing, is that they, they you know, you got to make sure you know your vote was counted. And in Super Tuesday, so many people don't know whether their vote was counted or not. And so many times already, it's like, I, I'm familiar with Idaho. Anyway, come on, Really? Ron Paul wasn't popular in Idaho, really, and North Dakota, and I mean, it was just, it was another fraud fest, and if you know the people there, and if you've been in those states, you know that Romney is not the, is, is not their idea of the top candidate, and neither is Santorum, right, they try, and again, the sto that makes a great story to divide the country, right, these Republicans, you're a Republican and you're a Democrat, look at, you look, look you Democrat, look what the Republicans are doing, right, they're not, they, they're, I mean, Santorum is an extreme case, and look at what, look, look, right, so they can scare the heck, I mean, I know so many Democrats that won't even take a look at Ron Paul just because he's uh, wearing red, right, <laughs> supposedly, okay, and like I said, in the future might be, uh, might be a time for uh, looking at third party, but for now, just keep working, just work 10 times harder, this thing's not over, they want, the story is out there to discourage you so that you don't show up. But instead, show up in droves, bring more, make more phone calls, do whatever you can do, right? This thing ain't over. This thing isn't anywhere near over. Get out there and fight the fight, guys. All right. Thanks for all your support. Crude on Ramones, how's the math for math education? Thanks for all you know, comments and everything. Put more comments, subscribe, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.